That's a little better. Uh, maybe even a little more. Um, all right, I was gonna do some detail on this here wing. And I'm not logged into the chat for some reason. Don't know how that happened. Shit. <laughs> Let's see if that works. Okay, great. And my phone always tells me that I'm streaming because <laughs> Twitch notifies me basically. <laughs> Where is this? Is a darkish red? It's a darkish purple. This could do. Yeah, I want to do a little darker purple here. So uh, say hi in the chat if you're watching. I always try to watch that as much as I can. Let's make this nice and gooey. this fade out a little more. plane on this finger. A little more sort of texture. Like right now they're too perfect and smooth. there's veins flowing through them or something. I can 
help show some of the pleating too. organic quality here I think is what I was looking for. Might be have a texture of some kind. Probably won't spend a whole lot more time. This will be a short stream I think. All I gotta do is this and then a bird up in the corner there. Just some pure purple here should do it. Yeah, like a transparent leathery sort of thing going on there. Let's do that up here too on this one. Way too dark. Transparent red oxide left. It's hard to tell. It's buried under there somewhere. Settle back here, I think. That's fun. Maybe even some like subtle indications of like veins. a little better. I think it's these kind of details that super dragon appreciator nerds are gonna super love. Oh my god, look at all the detail.
There we go. Now it's like a living organic texture. Sort of do an underplane on some of these. A little lighter. To show these like finger appendages. Cool. Yeah, that gives it way more of a <clears throat> proper finished organic quality to it. Okay. Bird in the corner doing a hop. mostly dry. I should still use the old stick. This is basically going to be a silhouette of a hawk. still. So it's going to be like there. Yeah, it's pretty good.
slip up on the end of the old finger feathers there. So I don't take the paint off below it. Do a little bit of a, a light on some of those areas, I think, just so we can see them. I suppose I could make him a little darker. No. I want to look like he's sort of in the distance a little bit. Hopefully, I make him too big. <laughs> yeah, it's like not too noticeable, but you do notice it when you look for it. That's pretty good. Maybe it could be a little smaller. It's a little big. Yeah, 
Let's see if I can carve it down a little tiny bit. This background, the sky is already dry, so I can sort of scrape away the paint very gently. That's pretty good. That's a lot better. Wow. Now I gotta do is let this dry for a few days and I can add some glowy things around everywhere. But otherwise this, this one might be done. Let's soften some of this. Not really. Here we go. Let's get some nice dark behind this shield. See, now I can just like nitpick. That stuff dries real quick with that medium. A lot of the stuff is pretty dry. Not entirely, but it's close.
touching up some of the scales down there. That's looking pretty nice. Let's back up here with the your old camera. See what we can see. Whoa, there we go. That's pretty good. Uh, I'll do the old. Uh, hi there, Brandon. How's it going again? I'll do the old tour here. Um, let's adjust the camera so it's accurate. I can go a little more bright and a little more saturated. Whoa, that's way too much. Wow. These settings are pretty subtle. Uh, all right. So here's the whole thing. Um, it's a little brighter. This is getting a little dark. Let's see if I can make that a little brighter. I know that uh, it tends to get a little slower with the camera when it's it's a little better. See now the saturation is too much. All right, that's good. I love that I have all these settings I can do on my on my. Uh, webcam. So here's the piece as a whole. Um, it's called disarming because I think uh, today more than ever we need to know when to lay the weapons down and find that connection between uh, this unfathomable chasm, you know. So two people who normally should be fighting maybe can find some kind of a common ground. If we just put down the weapons that we came with and actually stop and, uh, you know, find a moment of, of peace and, you know, conversation and understanding, you know, and we can actually find we have more in common than we thought. So here's uh, those. Here's our hero gal. And here's our hero dragon I did a bunch of I'm about to run out of cord here so I can't go over too much further I did all the scales today those came out pretty good had some meticulous work there just figuring out the plane changes and which ones catch light and you know getting the pattern right and stuff I did those fun little hands which I used my own hands as a quick little model actually um, here's some texture on the mountains so they, they go all the way down into the water and you can see the, like red paint underneath the, the the purples and blues and stuff so that's the underpainting that you can see see all that red like that makes some really cool um, sub texture maybe you don't notice it until you until you get real close but it definitely uh adds a lot to the piece and here are the wings that I did today I finished those I added some nice leathery organic texture to them which I think came out really good and kind of added some depth to the little fingers you know and then here's the ocean and here's I did a bird sort of a hawk flying into the distance there so it's like the sun is setting on this situation, so we better act soon. That's kind of, you know, it's tranquil, but it's also a little bit of a sense of urgency. Like the sun could be like hope, you know, before the sun sets, we better find an agreement on this. So, so there's the whole piece. 24 by 32 inches oil on wood panel. There's the oil. Um, so that's it. So this one is available um, both in prints and the original. Um, 
post the link here. 40% um, off as well. Uh, and then here's our our Patreon page if you want to follow us on Patreon. So you get all kinds of cool uh, members only discounts and stuff. So uh, thanks for joining me on this really interesting journey. This was a really challenging painting. Um, I'll do like, you know, after a several days of drying, I'll do some some glowy atmosphery things that really will will seal the deal, you know. Uh, it's it's like 99% done. Um, so yeah, those of you who watched, you were there. You can say, I was there. Uh, I'll also sign it at some point. Um, so uh, I'll put my... Um, this is my... Uh, my handle for most of my social media so you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram and such um, and uh, yeah that's it so uh, get your print if you want to get one of these um, subscribe to us on patreon if you want to get some cool members only um, features that aren't available to anyone else and then um, follow us on the the video uh, whatever service you're watching this on because uh, I stream this kind of stuff you know once or twice a week um, and uh, I've got a lot more dragon paintings coming, so if you like this kind of thing, I, you know, fantasy is a new genre for me, and I really am enjoying it. Um, thanks, Matt. Yeah, I, I really like this one. I'm like, I'm pushing my limits. I'm like, using everything I know on how to make these paintings. They're they're really challenging, so I'm really liking how they're coming out. This is my third. Um, I'd love to have a whole series. I'd love to have you know, ten in the next couple months. I have a couple of things I have to paint, but I'm really focusing on these because they're awesome. So we have, we have some plans for the fantasy-ness. So um, anyway, uh, thanks you guys for watching. You can throw a comment in there. I'm, I'm still looking. The Dementor Tea Party. Um, yeah, that one's um, by our artist, uh, Anna. Um, she's a, a, a um, Ukrainian gal who works for the gallery. Um, so, uh, Anastasia, she's awesome. So yeah, uh, that's still on the website. Um, that one's probably going to be at, um, might be at bucketart.com. Um, so yeah, you can get the Dementor having a tea party, um, as well as a ton of other really great parody pieces, um, by the artist Bucket, who's kind of the, the, the you know, the, the namesake of, of that company, uh, that website, Bucket. <clears throat> Ashley Rain and uh, Anna just has the one piece, um, uh, but it's mainly mainly those two artists and uh, you know some other funny stuff. But um, so uh, yeah, feel free to throw a comment out there really quick. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'm just uh, I want to take a picture of this because I'd like to take a picture with the palette um, because not everyone believes that it's um, real organic media <laughs> um, let me I'm gonna turn the light on real quick this of course makes the panel shiny and shitty um, for the video but uh, just to take a quick picture um, um, yeah you're welcome um, so, yeah, this has been a, I'm going to lift this up so I can clean. I've been cleaning my palette less and less <laughs> over the last several months. I used to clean it just scrupulously back to pure white every time I was finished. But I'm kind of just getting like, ugh. I want it to be smooth so I can do palette knife stuff on it, but I have not been putting my paint away. I just kind of leave it there because I paint often enough. Um, you know, I don't need to put it away. It's, it's oil. It's, it doesn't dry. Not for several days anyway. This is done. Let's 
scrapey scrapes. Yeah, I just want this to be smooth. That's really my main goal. So, do you guys have any questions about the painting or about my work in general or whatever? Um, fire them away. Now's your chance. I know eventually I will do a big, scary, angry dragon fighting somebody. That seems to be what you see the most when you see dragons. Is that you know, big, scary, fire-breathing dragon. I'd like to try to find a twist on that idea, though, just because it's been done so much, and I, I feel like any serious, like, dragon lore that I look up has the same kind of idea that dragons are very misunderstood, and they're actually very intelligent, and witty, and maybe kind, and all these things that you don't typically think of with a dragon. Like, oh, they hoard shit, and they burn people, and they eat damsels in distress, and all that kind of stuff. You know, which is, you know, the way that you see them the most often, true, but they're not necessarily, I don't, I'm trying to portray them as not necessarily all evil, you know? Maybe there's some other qualities to them that we should get to know. That's been the theme of my three that I've done so far. And I'm going to keep going with that because I like the idea. Let's pull away a little bit of this. I at least like to clean up the other colors that are stuck to the paint because I think I don't want to be jumping into some white and accidentally pick up a bunch of purple you know that would completely ruin the color that I'm trying to make leaving a little bit of paint on there because it's still wet I'll use it later but clearing away the wet other color that's hanging out there like some red on your ultramarine blue and you're trying to get a nice green out of it it won't happen I see some artists just paint with a mess color everywhere I'm like how do you get an accurate color out of that it's just a big pile of mess and everyone does what they do but I just don't Maybe I still care too much, just like I used to care too much about cleaning my palette, making it perfectly pristine at, at the end of each painting. And now I'm like, ah, save myself 15 minutes of cleaning all that shit up. I just leave it for tomorrow. I've been trying to get really good about cleaning my brushes though. Not just in mineral spirits, but uh, in cleaner as well, like properly, because those will ruin very quickly if you don't keep up on them. I mean, you can't help it, painting ruins brushes. There's literally nothing you can do about that. No matter how often you clean them, but it can slow down the process a little bit. Just clean them in some mineral spirits. 
I also used to do this one brush at a time and just be very meticulous and very careful and I'd be cleaning brushes for an hour every day. Eventually I'm like, you know what? I do the best I can for like five minutes <laughs> and then after that I'm done because they get ruined anyway. There's nothing. I try so hard to, to keep them nice and fresh and sharp and crisp with their sharp chiseled points and they just get frayed no matter what I do. So I spend a few minutes cleaning them to delay that a little bit if I can. Uh, uh, after that, I just don't care. Um, the brushes I buy aren't, they're good, but they're, you know, I might spend 150 bucks on brushes every like year, you know, so that, if that saves me how many hours of trying to clean them and make them perfect. And sometimes I actually don't mind when a brush is like, uh, you know, fat and shitty at the end if it's like some scrubby stuff that I'm doing uh, like here's a new one compared with an old shitty one um, so here's a new one it's, it's white it's got no paint on it at all yet of course um, and it's look how sharp that is versus this one which maybe it's a couple years old you know but that brush will never be the same. I can never ever get it back to this. But sometimes I want this crummy, frayed pile of garbage to do some scrubby things. And this one's for more precision, you know? So I save this one until I need it. <laughs> These ones I haven't used this session. Okay, uh, I think I'm done. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Christopher Clark, today painting for the Amazing Art Expo. Um, follow us. Check out the link and buy a print or the original if you're a collector. Um, check out our Patreon if you want to subscribe. And uh, that's it. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. And thank